on the Barn Fine Hunter series, we've had the good fortune of seeing a bunch of rare cars. But this is gonna be probably the rarest. We've seen a Porsche Speedster, we've seen a Bagasso, we've seen a Pantera, we saw a building full of Abarths. But this right here is, is probably the best we'll ever see in this series. It's a 1957 Ferrari 250 Elena that has not been washed since 1970. It's been sitting in a building most of the time in this building like this. It uh, was shipped here from Switzerland when it was several years old and used just a little bit and then parked. And, and here it is right now, parked in this spot. This, this car is so original and complete. Look at this original badge on here. It's, it's pretty wonderful, the, the patina. You can see a little bit of the yellow, the traditional background for the Ferrari emblem. A little bit of red up here. Uh, there was there was black on the, on the horse that's now gone, but that's all original and, and that's been baked by the sun and it just wore off that way. But this is interesting. These are the original fog lights for the car. These are made by Marshall. Well, you can see this one. This is the way it should look, and it's broken right now. Uh, the son of the owner at the time uh, had an, uh, a GMC truck that he thought was in reverse. And he was backing it out of the, the garage, this garage right here, but instead it was in first gear, it was in that low creeper gear, and the truck crashed this light. So this light's been broken for close to 50 years. So that's the only part this car needs to, to, to make it complete and original again is um, this, this glass and a new rim around here. But how lucky not to have touched any of the other bodywork here. This, this stainless trim, the hood, the grill, nothing else was damaged except this and this. So if you have this lens and this rim, get in touch with me and I'll tell the owner about it because he'll buy it from you. This is a classic front engine, 12 cylinder Ferrari. And this is a 250. So a 250 was uh, the designation for how many cc's were in each cylinder. So it's 250 cc's per cylinder times 12. And if I was a math guy, I could figure out that that was three liters. So it's a three liter engine, 240 horsepower, three Weber two barrel carburetors. This is a Colombo version or Colombo model V12, which was a classic Ferrari engine V12 that they offered for years. Giacchino Colombo was a designer for Ferrari and his engines were in Ferraris from 1947 all the way up to 1988. So he was part of the company for that long and it really was probably part of the, the racing and street success that Ferrari had all those years and in addition to Ferrari he also designed engines for Alfa Romeo uh, so he was the master of low displacement small displacement but high revving engines you know in, in America these days you think about you know like Mustangs or five liters a five liter Mustang is a V8 here's a 12 cylinder motor that's only three liters. So you know, everything about Ferrari was small displacement, high revving, low mass. And that's why, you know, back in the day when these were racing against, uh, well, 12 cylinder Ferraris, racing against six cylinder Jaguars, racing against V8 powered Allards, they were all doing well because some did well in straightaways, some did well coming out of turns. But everything about this thing is, is small, Look at these, these exhaust pipe here. There's headers coming down. The small diameter of the uh, headers coming out of the engine here, the exhaust ports, it's all small because everything was small. The pistons were small, the valves were small, and, and they were able to achieve much higher RPMs than a Ford uh, V8 or a Chevy V8 at the same time, which had more torque, low-end torque. Uh, so, Racing was, was good because everybody had an advantage of somewhere, somewhere on the track. This car was purchased by a man who well, really loved the car. He paid in 1971, I think $8,700 for it. And he has since passed away, but it's left it to his son. And his son has invited us here to, to take a look at this car. 
Uh, I'm told that within a year, this car will be back on the road just the way it is with the rust and patina. It'll be mechanically perfectly restored with the brakes will all be new, but it's going to look just like this. And I can't imagine a, a, a more appropriate car to drive around and piss people off. You would take this to a Ferrari meet and, and every other Ferrari owner would be in love with it and angry at you at the same time. Back when these cars were built, Ferrari built some of the bodies, but other companies built bodies as well. This one was designed by Pininfarina. Initially, it was built by Buono Body Company. That was the first iteration of this series. But then it was later built by Elena Body Company. The difference between Buono and Elena is, is this. The uh, roof on a Buono was a little bit shorter, two inches. But because the Elena was a grand touring car built for comfort as well as speed, well, comfort made it easier to get in if the roof was higher. So it was, the roof was two inches taller than a Buono body. And also they did away with the, uh, the vent windows, which at the time were so common in American cars, but not in foreign cars. So they, they got rid of the vent windows as well on the Elena body like this one. Most Ferraris are, I guess, primarily about the engine and the sound it makes and the, and the power it makes. Then the bodies are uh, so beautiful. And, and the interiors of Ferraris are, are kind of overlooked. People don't pay attention to the interiors of the cars because they're not very important and they weren't very beautiful. But in this car, the interior was beautiful. For a 1957 car, this was built to be fast and comfortable. You can look at this original kind of a biscuit color interior. These are original seats and these can be restored. They can be preserved using cleaners and oils to, to make the, the uh, seat pliable again, the leather comfortable again. This steering wheel is a wooden wheel. It started to split probably 40 or 50 years ago. So the, the owner, the, the, uh, the father of the man that owns it today, used electrical tape to keep it from splitting more and that's still on there. This car is so amazingly authentic. I'm gonna sit inside here, which is kind of a special thing. I mean, even a, a tall guy like me can sit in the Ferrari comfortably. Shift lever falls right at my hand here. It's a, it's a tall shift lever. I mean, it looks like a Hurst shifter, but it's uh, the original one. And it falls right right where it should if you, were, if you were driving the car. Gauges are easy to read. You can see that extra headroom. I mean, I'm one inch from here. So if this were a Buono body, my head would kind of be sideways a little bit. Uh, it, it's comfortable, it's beautiful. Look at this nicely knotted up piece of leather here for a, a grab handle for the passenger to have. Uh, the, the headliner looks perfect. You, you couldn't restore a headliner to look this nice and be this tight. It's got little lights in the back, but you notice there's no rear seat. This was uh, a, a, a two-seater grand touring car, and there are two straps back here that you could strap your luggage down. And maybe luggage was optional from Ferrari, or maybe you just have to buy it on your own, but you could put your luggage back there and strap it down so when you went whipping through the Alps, it wouldn't go slamming back and forth inside the trunk. The gentleman that owned this car had a business that he sold, and his retirement then was going to Europe on, buying, on a buying trip and buying cars and motorcycles and even airplanes and bringing them back to the States and selling them when he needed money. So this was one of the cars he bought on a buying trip, along with a number of motorcycles and I think seven airplanes, army trainer planes. So this car is really not even, has not even been touched since he brought it back to the States. If you look at this beautiful ashtray, remember ashtrays when ashtrays were in cars? Well, this ashtray is hand etched. So there were people in Italy that would etch this by hand and I'm gonna open this up, and there are two cigarette butts in here that are from Europe. Those cigarette butts have been in this car for more than half a century. Uh, and there's a, actually a match, and some ashes, and a nut. And who knows what that nut's for. But a, a heck of a piece of a time capsule here. Just a, wonder, a wonderfully undisturbed car. You never see cars like this anymore. So here's the original key fob, original key, original key that came with this car. That's probably the trunk key. It's a leather fob 
And that's what a Ferrari logo should look like. A black horse, yellow background, and then red, and in this case, green as well. That probably was included in the sale of the car. Key flicks made in England. So it's the original key to the car, but it's been in this ignition since at least 1971. And it slides in and out just, just perfectly. The odometer read in here is in kilometers. 51,292 kilometers have been put on this car since new, which translates to less than 32,000 miles. And of those 32,000 miles, probably none have been put on it in the last 50 years. So in the trunk here, here's a spare Barani wire wheel. Pretty rare stuff going on here. You can see this is how a wire wheel mounted on a spline. There's all little teeth in there, and it was a big knockoff that held it all together. But up here, you can see the original C Barani 16 by five and a half inch record. I guess that was the model of that. And then what's, I mean, if you look at the, this original carpeting in here, it's kind of a jute carpeting. It's all still there and still in place and still in good shape. A Ferrari collector would go nuts over a car like this. Now, I'm gonna take this toolbox, tool bag out and go over here to the hood and spread it out. Here's an original set of Ferrari tools, which is as rare as hen's teeth. If you look at this, there's a knockoff hammer, which is made of, uh, of lead, and you'd bang the knockoffs with that. This would be used for a uh, spark plug, pulling the spark plugs out. Original Ferrari screwdrivers, wrenches, probably all made in Italy. Molly Bendeno. Well, I guess that sounds Italian to me, so I'd say it's probably Italian. Uh, original pair of pliers in the original bag. Rare, rare, rare. We never have a choice of the cars we find in Barn Find Hunter. We open a door and there it is. It's, it's, a, it's a Camaro, it's a Mopar, sometimes it's a foreign car. But there are some iconic cars that collectors dream about finding. A Cobra in a barn, a rare Formula One car in a barn, car with history. This is one of those iconic cars. To be able to find an undiscovered Ferrari that hasn't been washed or out of this building in 50 years. It's one of those rare moments in time for a barn find person. Good luck in finding your own Ferrari in a barn. Happy hunting. I don't know what they are, but they look cute.